www.doomandbloom.net and today we're going to talk about second degree burns. The difference between a first degree burn and a second degree burn is that a first degree burn involves just the top layer of your skin, which is called the epidermis, it usually appears like a sunburn. A second degree burn involves the second layer of the skin, which is called the dermis. This usually appears wet, weepy, with small blisters, and sometimes very large blisters. Once you have identified the second degree burn, your first step is to cool it off. Now, if you have some water available that you can make a bath, and it's an extremity that you can place into the bath of water, go ahead and do that. Keep it in for at least 10 to 15 minutes. You do not want to use ice on any burns, regardless of the degree, because ice can cause further damage. You don't want to hurt the patient more. They're already in pain. Now, what you need to do, if you don't have a bowl of water or an extremity to place in the bowl of water, and, it's un and you're unable to actually get the part into the water, you're going to need to do cold compresses. Now, you can use gauze. You can use washcloth. We have kept some white cloth material, which was just an old sheet, to be able to make compresses. So either of these three would work very well for cooling off the area. As the comp compress warms up, go ahead and just dip it in some cool water again and replace it on the burr. 10-15 minutes. Once you have completed that, um, you need to make sure that the extremity is kept above the level of the heart to decrease swelling. You will also be taking off jewelry. Second degree burns involve swelling. You need to keep it from being constricted. If you have a pair of banded scissors handy, go ahead and cut off the clothing if it's constricting the burn and it's not convenient for you to take the clothing off, you may have to just cut it off. So make sure you get off constricting um, items. Then you're going to want to put something on the burn to help prevent infections. Once you have breached the armor or the outside of your skin, now you are susceptible to infections. Bacteria can get in there, it's very dangerous. So you're going to want to put a treatment on. You can use witch hazel with compresses. It also comes in a gel, which is very handy because it stays in place much better. There are burn gels that have lidocaine, which help with pain. There are essential oils, such as tea tree oil and lavender oil, which work well with burns. You can also make a decoction with tea. Either you can use chamomile or black tea. Again, what you're doing is making a tea, you're using your compress, and you're placing that on. You can use neosporin. Honey works really well. It helps with pain and it helps prevent infection and it's really great for the healing skin. You can also use vinegar. Now vinegar is great, again, mixed with water. You can either use the apple cider vinegar or white vinegar works just as well. There are silver products. There's a prescription, which is the number one hospital treatment for burns called Silvadine. There are also things you can buy first aid silver gels, and I just found this in the local um, pharmacy, and it's just a silver product, so you can also use that. There are also really wonderful healing herbal salves. Those are great for burns. So once you have placed a treatment on, go ahead and cover the area. Now, the most used burn coverage dressing is called a telfa. It can also be called a nonstick or non-adherent. What you're going to do is place that over the burn. You may use additional gauze. We prefer you use sterile gauze if you have it. Again, remember, this is an open area for bacteria. You want to prevent infection. So you're going to be covering it with the nonstick and then also sterile gauze. Now, again, you can attach this with either paper tape or they're self-adhering, they're called cobane. You would place the dressing and then use this to secure it loosely, and that just sticks to itself so it's really easy to get off and change the dressing. There's also something called Curlex. This is a roller gauze, very loosely, just covering the dressing. would allow you to change it very quickly. If it's a bigger area, you can cover it with an abdominal pad or a five by nine, or also called combine, or multi-trauma dressings. 
And these are large, they're either 10 or 12 by 30. And again, this would be for a larger area like the thigh or abdomen. Now, if you're going to use the dressings that don't have the non-adherent or shiny surface, it's a good idea before you put that dressing on to just coat very thinly on one side of the dressing with some Vaseline. And that will allow the gauze to be placed but not to stick to the healing skin. And that's very important because when someone's healing, you don't want to be pulling off their new skin. So that's how you can make that. And they do have a dressing that does have some Vaseline in it, but this is kind of expensive. Um, another thing you can wrap your dressings with is just a triangular bandage. Again, loosely. Don't want any constriction. Now, for pain, you can use ibuprofen. Ibuprofen works in a few ways. First of all, it helps to decrease the swelling, and second of all, it helps the pain. So ibuprofen is a wonderful treatment for second-degree burns. You also need to replace fluids. As these burns are weeping and oozing through the days, especially if it's a large area, you may have problems with shock. You're going to want to keep your patient warm with a solar blanket or just covers. You're going to want to give them fluids. Now these fluids are important. You don't just want to give them water. You want to give them electrolytes. And there are lots of electrolyte replacement um, tablets and powders to be mixed with your water. So go ahead and make sure you give them lots of fluids. If someone does lose a lot of fluids, they may have something called shock. They may have cool, clammy skin. Their pulse may become rapid, they may become a little confused, and their blood pressure may drop. So you want to make sure that you keep your patient well hydrated so they don't develop shock. If you see this starting, elevate the legs above the head with a couple of pillows, and again, if they're conscious, make sure that you're providing them with lots of fluids and keep them warm. So a second degree burn should heal just fine if you make sure it doesn't get infected, you keep it covered while the skin is healing, and watch out for shock. This is Nurse Amy. Thank you so much. Again, we're at www.doomandbloom.net, and join us again for another medical video. Thank you.